Well, good morning, Glen Arbor Community Church. Glad you could be here today. This is, uh, this is Mother's Day, and um, some of us, maybe your mother is here today, maybe your mother is out of town, just a thought about that. My parents live uh, on the East Coast, and maybe think about something you really appreciate about your mother. Maybe you could tell her that today. Give her a call and say, I really appreciate how you did that today. Just a suggestion for you, but something to make it personal for your mom. So just a few other announcements uh, for you. There is a uh, young women's Bible study uh, on the first of the month, once a month. If you see Kelsey for more information, if you're interested in that. And uh, we are um, just on one other reminder I wanted to highlight. Actually, three other reminders I wanted to highlight is we do have a weekly prayer meeting. So I'd like to pray more. You can come here at 9.15. We gather in the room on the right-hand side. Uh, uh, first Sunday school room, just gather with us at uh, 9.15 a.m. We did have a baptism last week, last Sunday, uh, some with our church and with our uh, Cornerstone, uh, our partner church there. We likely may have another one later in the summer uh, uh, as more people get the conviction to follow the Lord. It's a great opportunity but keep, uh, thank you for participating us with us with that. One other thing, just to thank you for all the people who serve in Awana. Our Awana Awards ceremony was last Sunday, and that was really, uh, oh, sorry, last Wednesday, last Wednesday. But um, I've been traveling a lot, getting all the days confused, so uh, I'm back with you today. But I wanted to thank everyone who did that uh, to have an influence in young students' lives. I remember I used to go to a Sunday school class uh, when, I was, uh, when I was a little kid, and we did not like it. We, uh, it, it, was, it was kind of the weekly reminder there was something worse than school. And, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but our, all of our Awana leaders worked to make it a fun, engaging time. So thank you for everyone who worked all year and helping our youth learn about who the Lord is. So that's all my announcements for today. We're going to have Greg come up and uh, pray for our service together. Thank you, Dean. Um, so this uh, Thursday, Thursday and Friday, uh, Linda and I had a chance to go to Pastor's Wives Conference at Starved Rock National Park. Those of you who have been here at there, no, it's uh, very beautiful. It wasn't those two days because it rained most of the time. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, it, what was good about it was we uh, met with other pastors and their wives from our associated churches. And um, really, uh, what was great about that was the unity. We were a team. We worked together. And we, there were various things that we discussed, worked on, and uh, voted on. And uh, as a, as an organization, as a small, very small organization, and uh, um, the the main theme there was promotion of the gospel and uh, the truth. And so, we'll be talking about a lot about being a t team member and uh, being first team member. And uh, as we get into that, let's uh, just pray um, that we just uh, honor mothers today, and also uh, talk about uh, understand our 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 place as a team member on our team. So, Lord, thank you so much that you've set this up, a, fam a family, the mother, father, and their children, our family, the first, the, the first thing that you established. Lord, and I just thank you for that, and I ask that you would uh, just show us where do we fit in on, on our particular team, uh, whatever that might be, whether it be at church or at work or in our family. Lord, all the teams that we have, you would help just show us to be a good team member, Lord. And we just praise you for that this morning as we lift you up uh, above all else today. In your name we pray, amen. Good morning, everyone. It's a joy to see you. Why don't we stand together and worship the Lord our God together in song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above you, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
three men who defied a king and would not worship his image or his gods. And his, in his anger, he threw these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, into a fiery furnace. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astounded and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, But I see four men unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like the son of a god. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And everyone was astounded that the fire had no power over the bodies of these men. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Our God is powerful and has strength to deliver. He is before us and behind us and within us, empowering us not only to live the Christian life, but to make it through the trials on which we're called to serve him. Oh, come behold the works of God, the nations at his feet. He breaks the bow and bends the spear and tells the wars to cease. Oh, mighty one of Israel, you are on our side. We walk by faith in God who burns the chariots with fire. Lord of hosts, you're with us, with us in the fire. 
with us as a shelter, with us in the storm. You will lead us through the fiercest battle. Oh, where else would we go but with the Lord of all? Oh, God of Jacob, fierce and great, you lift your voice to speak. The earth it bows and all the mountains move into the sea. Oh, Lord, you know the hearts of men. in the storm, you will lead us through the fiercest battle, oh, where else would we go but with the Lord of Brothers and sisters, in that confidence and joy, turn and greet each other in the Lord this morning. Join with the body of believers. And once again, happy Mother's Day to all. And uh, those of you who have forgotten will be running to Walgreens, I'm sure, after this. And they are open. <laughs> so uh, what I thought I'd open up our time, we're going to be uh, talking about... Y- yes, sir. Oh, prescription by mail? Okay, you could have those gifts mailed to you. <laughs> it just depends on the mother, if she'll accept that. But thank you for reminding me about that. Let's, uh, we're going to pray. We're going to pray now, and uh, um, really what I'd like to do is honor mothers uh, today in in a prayer, so I was going to do that, and then you could think about who you would like to honor, or maybe there's more than one 
in your own life and uh, um, just lift that to the Lord and I'll give you a little bit of time after I pray to do that. So let's uh, lift up that, those, uh, those that we're thinking of in our hearts. Lord, we do lift up. Thank you for this day where we can celebrate uh, motherhood and uh, thank you that you have established that. As we're going to talk about today, you've established uh, uh, that in our lives and that um, um, you, I just thank you for uh, my mother. I would not be here without her. And uh, I know, thank you for the effort that she put into my life and building into my life. And I really uh, uh, love her for that, appreciate that, that and I uh, want to express that for all mothers here even today. And I just uh, want to uh, pause and let each of us uh, do that privately and in our own hearts. Lord, once again, we lift you up as the authority over all in families and, uh, um, our, and, and we uh, look to you and ask that you bless those who are thinking of. We ask that they be honored today and that you would, uh, in all, would be glorified. In your name we pray. Amen. Uh, we'll now have a reading um, by my lovely wife. All right, good morning. Uh, our reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us, in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. If you could... Uh... If you have Bibles, either electronic or physical, you can turn to Ephesians 5, and you, starting at chapter, or excuse me, verse 22. And uh, so we're, we, start, we talked about the Trinity the last several weeks. Now we're, we're jumping to Ephesians 5, where um, we have, over the last several years, really gone through Ephesians. And this was at a time when we were going verse by verse, and over the several years, we are near the end, so this is chapter 5 and 6, and um, we ended midway through, part way through uh, chapter 5 in 2023, and what we'll plan to do is we'll go through the rest of chapter 5, which is about marriage or God's uh, plan for marriage, but also um, the, uh, the, uh, chapter 6, which we will 
um, really focus on the armor of God, verse by verse, and uh, looking at the different elements of the armor of God. So that's our plan for the summer, and uh, um, that's what we'll be working on. So the first part of the chapter, of this chapter, just as a reminder, and we went through this, is how to be an imitator of God, right through, all the way through verse 21. And then it lands into this section that talks about the mystery of marriage as it relates to Christ. And we're going to review the next three verses, verses 22 through 24, which for somehow I agree to do this on this day. (laughs) And as soon as I open it, I go, okay, what are we talking about now? I go, oh, no. Here's the verses, and now you will find out why. Why is Greg so concerned about doing these verses? Verse 22, wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is also the head of the church. Let's see if it goes for me. Nope. Could you advance for me? And uh, he himself being the savior of the body, but as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives all to be to their husbands in everything. Happy Mother's Day. All right, I have a funny story related to this. So I was at, oh, and this was some of you, some of you were there, and you remember, you know who I'm talking about. So this was the passage. They decided we're going to read Ephesians 5, this section, for the wedding. And the reader went up there, and uh, it was beautiful. They started with uh, this chapter 5, and they were supposed to read the rest of it, which we're about to read, and... Um, they read through this, wives, and that ended with verse 24 and stopped and then went back down and forgot that he was supposed to read the rest of it, and it was hilarious. <laughs> it was funny. And uh, so they, they haven't lived that down since then. Um, and why is that? Well, it's by itself, it sounds very like, whoa, oppressive and horrible. But let's read the whole thing. This is part of a larger section, and just like the rest of Scripture, um, looks like this is, oh, if I turned it on, it would work a lot better. There we go. Let's read the rest of this. So this, so we talk about wives, and now we're going to talk about husbands and, and also the, the mystery here. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by this washing of water with the word that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. So husband ought to love their own wives as their own body, but all, who loves he who loves his own lo- wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church, because we are members of his body." For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to the Christ and the church. Nevertheless, each individual among you also is to love his own wife as himself, and the wife must see to it that she respects her husband. So you could see, since he was supposed to read all of that, if you just read those first three verses, that is, you know, Pretty funny uh, to, to forget all that because it balances out so much better. It, it shows this relationship, this mystery, how this is, relates to Christ and the church. So if you just read verses 22 through 24, it seems lopsided. And that is why there's so much pushback, I would say, if you don't take everything into account. So I wanted to read the rest of it, as we will need it to place this in the whole context of God's plan for marriage, not just our plan or the world's view, because we will mess it up. And uh, it has been messed up in a lot of ways. We didn't design marriage. We didn't design marriage. God did. We are participants in it. So we need to embrace this section in the whole context before and after For example, the verse just before this is 
and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. So everybody's to be subject to one another. So um, I looked at the term be subject to, just, and different translations use different things, but this is primarily what it is, or it's submit. And the negative connotation of this statement abounds. I want to clarify, I want to clarify this, but I don't want to back off. I really don't, from what God is commanding us. So other translations use the word submit. That doesn't sound much better. You know, but in the same terms utilized when Paul says submit or be subject to the government, such as in Romans 13, it's, we, we see this kind of language. It's, it says some, everyone must submit to governing authorities. So what, is, what, what are they talking about? Well, be subjugated to, or you know, be uh, just, just, just uh, keel over and die. Is that what that's talking about? And not at all. We see this language all over, all over Scripture, and we don't have a problem with it when it's God. God. But when it's people, we get really squeamish. We don't have any problem submitting or being uh, subject to uh, God, but we have a real problem with other people. Why? Because people make our backstabbers. They betray us. They aren't always good at what they do. And quite frankly, you know, when we get squeamish, I don't blame you. I really don't, because I feel the same way depending on who we are subject to. Because there are bad governments, and they're bad husbands. There's lots of examples of bad authorities in our life. You can, I'm sure you're thinking of one right now, or several. I am. These authorities in our life, these directions seem unreasonable and unfair. Why should we be subject or submit to each other? People backstab me. Why should I be subject to my husband, or why should we be subject to husbands? They drink beer, they belch, and watch sports all day. If you let them. Amen? Oh, yeah, I, I know, I know. Why should we submit ourselves to the government? They tax us. They make unfair laws. We were just talking about this day. Oh, property tax. Oh. And are often oppressive to Christians and many others, many other religious groups or many other people, depending on where you live in the world. Because, but because all authority comes from God, it's part of the plan. And here's an example. This was the verse I was talking about earlier. And I'm going to jump around because it's a long section. And, but I just want to get the, the gist of what he's saying here. In uh, Romans 13, he says, Everyone must submit to governing authorities. What? Wow. For all, now remember, this is, this is on the cusp of they are being suppressed by the Romans. But this is what he's saying. For all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against God, against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right, and they will honor you. Jump to verse 6. Pay your taxes too. What? Oh, man. For these same reasons, for government workers need to be paid, and they are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and governing fees for those who collect them and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. Okay, this kind of rubs us the wrong way a little bit. It can, or it can. We are all subjects. We are all submit in some level to God's ultimate authority, and it is for our good. That's what God is saying. Well, how can that be? So I realize um, I'm in this kind of relationship with a, almost everybody I deal with. Some sort, like, one is we are uh, in some sort of relationship in various forms. And I just re I realized this yesterday when I was setting up my new Wi Fi. So I'm in submission to the Wi Fi company. <laughs> and 
And you might think, well, how can that be? Uh, let's, you know what I'm talking about if you've ever set up your own Wi-Fi. <laughs> so in this case, and I'm not going to say who it is, in this case, it's, so the Wi-Fi company comes and they say, we will provide you all the internet and, 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 and fantastic speeds. Then you'll be able to download your cat videos at incredible, incredible speeds and you'll be able to text and do all these things if you, if you buy our product and you set it up in your home. And okay, so um, I realized this because they, they said, hey, by the way, we're going to shut off your internet if you don't switch to this new internet. Okay, well, that seems pretty aggressive. You know, you're going to, if I don't do this, you're, you're going to shut me off anyway. Okay, so, so I decided to do that, and I set it up. And so there's these things you have to agree to, and that's your terms and conditions. Have you ever read all the terms and conditions that you have to agree to in order to get Wi-Fi? I haven't, because it's a lot of words. Reading words is difficult, but it's a lot of stuff. If you ever read some of them, you go, oh, my gosh, you know, give your firstborn if you don't do this, and really, really bad stuff. So, um, but it's, it's a lot of things you have to agree to, and you agree to it, and you agree to pay a monthly fee, and you agree to set up the Wi-Fi unit right where it can see the window so it's looking out the right direction, which I didn't know about. And then, so we're, we're doing all these things we agree to, and so we're submitting to the Wi-Fi company in order to get something back. So in this case, I want to show that it, there's many, many different ways. Not that the Wi-Fi company is great, but just that we all have this kind of relationship in many, many different ways. And, um, and it's not just their plan, it is God's plan, it's, and it actually works very well. It's just the opposite of critics or attempts to backfit this socially or politically, but as C.S. Lewis points out, psychologically and in love and faith, and uh, Chris is actually going to talk about this next week. He doesn't know it, but he is. <laughs> no, I know that because he told me. So I'm setting you up there. Look at that. So I'm, I'm going to clarify, but I'm not going to back down or apologize for God's truth or, com or command as our creator. Now, for wives, the question is, why and how do we embrace the scripture? And the other thing I wanted to point out is that this is not just for wives, what we're going to talk about. This is for everybody. If you're a child, if you're a, a husband, if you're a sister or a brother, if you're a team member of some sort, you're going to find that this, this applies to you. So let's just, let's just dive in and, and see where this goes here. So the first thing, the first, let's just hit the first subject. So wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. So remember, the verse before this was verse 21. Be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. And all the previous section that discussed the imitating the character and qualities of God. So I'm going to read the ver very first verse of chapter 5. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, as a pleasing aroma to God. So the presumption is you have bought into the terms and conditions of all the verses before this one. You've already read it and have signed off, just like I signed off for my Wi-Fi. They are, have Christ in their hearts. They are, your family, whatever team you've joined, is living a different life than the world is are already considering others as more important than themselves. And if this is true, these verses make perfect sense, and it makes, it's, very, it's, it's no problem. If, it, if it, that's not what's happening, then it doesn't make any sense. So given hearts that all follow Christ, Christ asks us to submit to fo or follow others, specifically wives, their husbands, and who are also following Christ, then that seems more reasonable because those husbands are not burping on the couch as much. They are leading their family in Christ in love and faith. 
or they should be. When we know our leaders are looking out for us, we will gladly follow them. I guarantee it. You will follow someone that's looking out for you. In uh, this scene from uh, Gladiator, I'm not going to show this movie. This is from the, this is a slide. At the beginning, if you're familiar with the movie, uh, he's, uh, this is the uh, uh, General Maximus. So he's going through his ranks right before the battle, and uh, they're, they're, they've all obviously been through battle. Some of them have bandages on. They're, uh, they're, they're injured, but they're going, General, hey, General, how are you this morning? How's it going, man? Good to be here. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be by your side. Good, good job. They all have great respect for him with a smile and respect. And even with injuries and bandages on him, they're following him. Because he has earned their respect. Because he has shown his skill, but also he has shown that he really cares about them. They will gladly follow him into battle. Those of you who have been in battle, been in real wars, know what the value of a strong leader that you trust. They are willing to die for him because he has already done the same for them. This is the mutual complementary union that works beautifully that we all want to have with someone. It doesn't really matter what role we take as long as the love and respect is present. Being the soldier is hard. Being the leader of a soldier is harder. Being a wife is hard. Being the husband is hard. Being in this loving relationship together is crucial to be able to do our commanded jobs, to be able to survive it. It is crucial, otherwise you end up concluding marriage is not worth it. You have to come to that conclusion. It's not worth it, and sadly, many have. So what does being subject to the Lord mean in this context? It does not mean being a slave or subjugated or conquered or as some have suggested. That's just bogus. That is not what this is talking about. Any more than my employee, I have employees at work uh, do to me uh, do to me as their supervisor or me to their management. I don't. That's not the relationship we have. In order to do my job, I need to work with my team to get things done. And I have about 20, 20 people that report to me. We talk about challenges and come to a conclusion on what to do. If we need someone to make a final decision, I make it, or I, if I can't, I ask my management, and they make it, depending on what it is, so the severity and who's responsible for that thing. So I don't make, make decisions about directions for the entire company from my position, because that's not my responsibility. But I do make decisions about my team or my family. My team supports and implements those decisions. They submit or subject themselves to my direction. If I don't have that, then it really just doesn't work. It doesn't, it, and things don't get done. And that's how many, 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 many organizations work. My family worked that way too. When we had our children at home, we talked about how we were going to do things, and if we needed a decision, which was rare, but it happened, I had to make it because that was my responsibility under God. So, for example, I, um, I picked these painted motifs to a man and woman painting together. Linda and I have been doing that recently at my son's Eric's house for the last six months. But we had to do that all together to uh, get Eric's house going so he could move in. And uh, you should visit him sometime. He would love to have you come over and see his house. To work together, you need things to work this way. That's, that's how it does. Does this mean that every decision I made was right? No. No. There's some that I regret. But I made it and took responsibility for it. I do that every day at work. I do that at church. I do that in many different, different ways. And other times, I'm the one in submission. I follow the, follow the leader. It's their decision. My soldiers, my team, my family stood by me through it all. And you have to have that. And that's what this is talking about. My daughter now, just married last year, has to stand by her man. 
And I handed her to a Andrew, and some of you were there, as I relinquished my responsibility and my authority to him. Boy, did my blood pressure go down right after that event. <laughs> No kidding. That's something. As a church, as a, at church, our, as a pastor, we make decisions and direct and do stuff, but need the church to support us as we perform our tasks to lead and protect the church. Have you ever seen a boss whose employees don't respect them? What about soldiers? And I'm sure those of you who have fought, you know, been, been in the Army. And uh, have you ever had a, uh, an officer that the soldiers really didn't follow very well or didn't respect, ever seen that? Gee, it seems like every war movie I ever see has that in it somewhere. A church that really doesn't follow their pastors, have you ever seen that before? Not too often. What happens, though? Things just dissolve. They just fall apart. If a husband doesn't have the support from his wife, he can't operate, period. We have all seen marriages where the husband doesn't love the wife and or the wife doesn't follow or respect the husband. Christ has my love, faith, and respect because of who he is. That is what Paul is asking. Like, you follow him, follow your husband. Stand by his side, support him, even when he makes mistakes or does embarrassing things, because he will, and the marriage will fall apart, or at a minimum, will be unpleasant and strained without that. Very simply, Paul is asking you to stand by your husband as you would Christ because he follows me. So what's the practical here? This is really for everyone. Whatever your team is, commit to your team in Christ. Whether it's at work or it's church or your family, commit to it. Be all in. Show that you are uh, all in and tell your family, your work, your church, tell them you're it and committed to in Christ. That is the practical for obeying this verse and the others directed at all of us in this regard because the others are very similar in this, in the way they just ask to submit to one another, submit to whoever's in authority because they need, in order for the team to work together, that in order for a coach to run his, his football team, all of these, there are many, many, many examples of this. So this is not something that is new. Let's go on to the next part of this. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the savior of the body. So what is the head that this husband is supposed to be? Like any human body usually has a head on it, usually, unless you, know, you watch a horror film, that leads the rest, and we know from 1 Corinthians 12 that using the body analogy, let's see if I had this, yes, um, I'm just going to... Uh, just for time's sake, I'm going to run through this a little quick. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one, so it is with Christ. For the body does not consist of one member, but many. And I skipped to verse 4 there. Now skipping to verse 22. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable, and on those parts the, of the body that are we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor and our unpresentable parts are treated with great, greater modesty. And then you could read the rest just for time's sake. So working backwards, first, Christ is our initial mutual savior and head of the church is his body. The church has its head, the leadership, and we all part of it, and no part is more important than the other, all the other parts working together. As I mentioned before, I'm the supervisor of an INC team of 20 people. I'm the head of my department. When I'm out, I have someone else stand in for me, so they are the temporary head of the things, so that things continue to run smoothly. Everyone has a function and, 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 and a project and a part, and my job is to make sure everyone has what they need and has to, in order to do their work. And then the family needs a head, the father. Where there, that is not possible, because I know there are many types of families here. Other people take that position. You have to fill both roles. For example, we have families here that in order to run, others have to step up. And that's not wrong, but the, it is a necessity of any family, big or small, to operate. 
All the parts have to be there. The picture that God is drawing here is to show a relationship to our Savior. How then all the parts work together when they do. How beautifully and wonderful it is. You know, I picked Linda, my wife, because I was impressed with how she followed Christ, how she loved him and served him. Christ told, told her to place her loyalty to follow me because we both follow him. We are part of the church that follows him, and we both in unity obey him by embracing our roles. Let me tell you, when it works, it really works well, and it's comfortable. I have not been happier because I first obeyed him and she first obeyed him. Because he is our savior and he protects his church. In the same way, I pledge on my wedding day to protect her with all my life. And I gave over my life to become one with her, to love her only. In the same way, she followed this pledge to her pledge, her love, faith, and respect to me. And we signed the terms and conditions and entered into it for life. And we got free Wi-Fi. <laughs> not everyone keeps up with their side of the bargain. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Not everyone does that. But God is saying when they do, because of what he did, it is beautiful. Because she is a, a beautiful bride. So what's the practical here? Walk with your Savior. Be close to Christ. Make sure your relationship with him is strong before you engage with your husband, family, or team, whatever it might be. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. Finally, the third part of this is as a bride. This is the part, last part that is parable and parallel and is a great mystery. As Paul calls it, calls it to this equation and relationship. As the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be to their husbands and everything. The, this last parallel or mystery or metaphor that is drawn in, is between the church as a bride and the woman as a uh, church as a bride and the woman as a bride prepared for the wedding ceremony. If you are not familiar with this metaphor, uh, multiple times, particularly in Revelation, the church is described as the bride to Christ. Here's just a, uh, a few verses that talk about that. Uh, in Revelations 19.7, let us rejoice and exalt and give glory, him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. <coughs> Excuse me. In 2 Corinthians, for I, I feel divine jealousy for you since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. We have entered into a covenant when we accept Christ as our Savior. We are betrothed to him. We subject ourselves and wait for his eventual return for us like a bride. Might wait for her husband to return from a long sea voyage. We remain faithful to him in the same way. Wives are asked to remain true and subject to their husbands. So next week, Chris is going to go over the husband's role in more detail and how they point to Christ as well. This becomes the life scene that everyone around sees and is the picture that points to Christ and his church that God wants everyone to see that they might desire it. Matthew 5, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to, Father, to your Father who is in heaven. This mystery is what points to Christ by its very nature. Our marriages, our marriages are an example of that. When we deviate from the plan and our commitment and our love and faith, then we stop pointing to Christ. And people stop looking for him in us. Because there's nothing special here in that relationship. It's like everything else. So what's the last practical? Pray for your team. Pray for your husband, even when he burps, your family when they disrespect you, your coworkers or your team members when it's hard and it's hard, and see your Savior go to work in their hearts. No one promised, no one promised that it would be easy. Just and that they're not that's not what's promised here, that it would be easy. 
just the best for you and everyone around you to model this mystery before a dying and lonely world, hungry for what you have in Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of faith and maker of marriages. So in summary, here's three practicals for you. Commit to your team in Christ. Walk with your Savior and pray for your team. And here's a summary of very similar to this whole section we're going to be reviewing. Colossians 3.18, Wives, submit to your husbands as fitting to the Lord. Husband, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And children, obey your parents and everything for this pleases the Lord. And next week, Chris will go over with the husbands. I'll pray and the music team can come up as I'm doing that. Lord, thank you so much for your guidance and your truth. And thank you that you are the maker of marriages and that you... Um, put us together in the relationship we're in. And I know some are not in that relationship, and that's okay. But Lord, whatever team we're on, that we would commit to it. Whatever that you, we would be committed to that as we are to you. And that you would bless it. And that you would reveal yourself in it. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Greg. Let's stand and continue worshiping the Lord in song. And we meditate on these things. Oh, the earth will 
shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Mother's Day to all. Go in peace and may the Lord be with you.